We can start. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So, uh, okay. Welcome to this presentation. Uh, bienvenidos, bienvenidos. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good night. For me, it's 10, 20 in the night. Um, so today I'm going to present you uh, what has been my experience migrating a Spring Boot application into Quarkus. So I've been hearing a lot about Quarkus and I've been using a lot Spring Boot. So I was impressed and I decided to, to try it. So uh, this is the, the main purpose of, of this presentation, just showing you my experience of following this path. Uh, well, these are the steps that I'm going to follow in this presentation. Uh, so just check it out and then you will, you will know when you, you want to step out. I hope not. And I hope to impress you a little bit or at least to light the curiosity of uh, Quarkus and the migration if you don't still have it. Uh, and I will be more than happy if I can achieve that. Okay, so first uh, I'm going to show you, well, who am I and who is going to give you this presentation to put you a bit on co in, in context and what can you expect from this presentation? So just to probably to lower your expectations if you are expecting, I don't know, a super uh, technical talk or a magistral lecture of, of Quarkus. Um, and then I will explain a bit what it is Quarkus for those that still doesn't know. And then it's the, well, for me, my, uh, the, the, the interesting part for me, because it's where uh, I've been working the most, I will explain you why I decided to migrate and why I decided to follow this path and invest all these, these hours migrating one application into Quarkus. Obviously, I will show you which are the steps that I followed in the migration, but uh, take into consideration that you can always go to my uh, GitHub repository and you will see all the commits that I followed uh, in order to migrate. But I will explain them. Then I will give you a performance comparative, but you have to take this as it is, something shallow, something quick, easy, without going into uh, deep details or probably without using the, the proper tools to do it. It's a simple comparative using the same way to, to get the metric, but Probably it can be done better and, and, it, and it can um, make more deeply metrics about the performance. In the end, I will give you some references that uh, it can help you if you are, uh, well, going to migrate or if you are uh, curious about Quarkus and this migration path. So let's start. I'm one of the organizers in the Barcelona Java user group in this beautiful city, Mediterranean city of Barcelona. And also I'm co-founder of the JBC and Conf. It's a, com a Java conference that we host every year here in Barcelona. Uh, next year, it's gonna be the sixth edition. And we gather around 800 uh, attendees and well, Red Hat is always uh, present there and a lot of uh, speakers are coming from Red Hat and other big companies also. And it's, well, if you don't have anything better to do in July, uh, summer near the beach, good food and good weather and good company, then just come to this conference. Also, I work as a software engineer at Red Hat in the application modernization and migration team. Uh, we work in applications that uh, are helping people to migrate their applications from different sources to different targets. Here in the left, you have, well, the ways to contact me, my Twitter handle, my email, 
also my blog where you can find uh, a blog post about this migration, also a blog post about um, using test containers in order to test like if you were in production. I encourage you to take a look. And other posts that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm posting um, regularly with, uh, with, with the things that we do in our, in our team. And here you have, well, uh, my, my GitHub account also to see the code. By the way, I'm the, the guy in the left uh, that uh, is receiving a, a beautiful painting. So what can you expect of this talk? Well, it's my opinion. It's not a magistral lecture, so I'm not going to teach you anything. This is something that works, but probably you can find better ways to do it. And if you find it, please mm, tell me because I will be more than glad than improve the code. And this is not the way. So you can find several ways of doing this and I encourage you to try your own. But uh, this is only showing my experience and uh, with uh, successes and with errors and probably you can improve it uh, a bit or, 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 or a lot but it's my experience. So what I've done is to use these uh, two versions from Spring Boot, it's 225 and Quarkus is 170. Uh, okay, so a uh, brief description about Quarkus. Uh, I expect that everyone knows which is this game. Um, so for those that do not know which is uh, what's uh, Quarkus, okay. Well, this is like uh, you, the description you can find everywhere. Well, it's mainly uh, Kubernetes native. So it's, uh, it's focused on being executed on uh, Kubernetes and interact very well with it. It also can, you can use different flavors. So you can use Java, Scala and Kotlin. And one of the key things is that is, um, is created always thinking and that it can be uh, easily compiled natively with GraalVM. Also, you can run it using uh, hotspot on the JVM, but I think you will find the best uh, performance if you go to, to native. And also, one of the most important things, at least for me, is that it's using a standard libraries that you, we've been using for quite a long time. So it's not redefining anything. It's not uh, making you to move to your standard libraries to the Quarkus ones. So probably you can find uh, changes on, on the libraries, but it's, it's uh, mostly the standard one. Well, it's it's the, the, the key point that I'm I, I want you to to take on this is it's really fast. It's uh, it has a a smaller footprint. It's focused on easy to code, so uh, it's not complicating the, the the way to 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 use it. And I can say it is that way because uh, for me it was very very easy. Also, it's, it's super important, it's open source and it has fast paced releases. So they are releasing a new version, well, um, every two weeks, three weeks, it's, it's uh, a very fast, fast cadence and well, fixing issues or creating uh, new extensions or new improvements, I have to say that uh, this presentation has suffered some changes just because when I was delivering it, uh, some things that were not ready, that were already already released. So it's, it's the, the, the team behind Quarkus is, is amazing. Uh, and it also comes with lots of extensions. So at, uh, at the moment of creating the presentation, there were more than 90 extensions and growing and growing. So you can find, well, most of the uh, 
libraries that we've been using uh, are there. So I don't know, Kicklow, Camel, Kafka, Rest Easy, Flyway, Hibernate, InfiniSpan. Obviously, it can connect with OpenShift, with um, uh, Spring, with, well, there are Kubernetes, there are tons of those extensions that are natively uh, compilable. So you can always go to native with your code. About the Quarkus evolution, well, I would say that the 001 was released more or less in December 2019. And now we are in the version 1.7. And there's more or less two years. And we've come from 001 to 1.7. But it's not because they are um, doing, let's say, big releases uh, every now and then, but because they are adding, adding uh, minor releases every, well, in this case, in this uh, chart, it was uh, around two weeks. So it's, uh, they are a lot of changes, really. Regarding the performance, well, I would not enter into detail, number details, but I would like to uh, give you the, the the knowledge about uh, the difference between a traditional cloud native stack and Quarkus native with GraalVM. So this is a big difference. Also, if you go to a uh, hotspot, you will find uh, a lot of difference. So it depends on the application. You can find more or less difference, but uh, this is a, like an, an order of magnitude. So you can find that more or less Quarkus can go to uh, half of the traditional cloud stack, and it can be 10 times less if you go to native using Graal. So it's, uh, it's very fast, and it consumes uh, way less memory. I will show you later in a, in a comparative. This is, uh, well, the main page of the GitHub uh, repository. Just only to show you that there are, in, th in this moment that I captured this screen, it was, well, 100 closed issues, 100 new issues. So it's uh, in, in only one month. So they are, they are doing a lot of stuff. There is a lot of people behind. At that moment, it was 52 people contributing. And there are, well, almost 4,000 people giving a start to this project. So it's, uh, it's very new, but it's uh, very broad, let's say, uh, with a lot of people uh, trying to use it. So about the migration. So now we have an idea of what is Quarkus. And now we have an application uh, using a Spring Boot. So let's go to the migration step. I expect that everyone also knows which is this game. I love this game. So why I decided to migrate from Spring Boot to Quarkus? Well, my experience is that uh, with the Spring, it's been always easy to develop and, and uh, well, easy to, to create uh, applications with CDI, REST, different libraries. But it had long startup times. Uh, tests are eternal. Probably we can improve uh, the way we, we did the, the tests, but it was, well, it was a lot of time uh, doing those tests. Because for each one, the context needed to, 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 to go up. And in the context, there are lots of things uh, being started. So, well, that, that was the result. It was long startup times. The application was very heavy. So it was the size of the package was very big. And also, I always had this impression that too many things happen behind. So if you check the log, you will see different things going on that you didn't expect to happen. Probably this is because, well, some parts of the spring are needing that. But this can also impact the performance of uh, the startup. So 
Quarkus, uh, I read about it and, well, the posts were saying it's easy to develop applications. Okay, I like it. It's fast. Okay, I, I also like it. Uh, it's lightweight. Well, uh, it's not so important, but I like it too. And finally, it's also Graal VM compatible. So I can, I can create a nati native application that it will allow me to convert my applications into services and those services I can use them in uh, well if we go in the serverless so if we go to lambdas in AWS on or any other fast uh, we can just simply have our application as a function uh, that will be only paying the time that it is running so at at the moment a lot of those functions are created using node.js or python just because those are uh, way faster than traditional java but if i can put my application natively compiled using GraalVM as a function, then probably I will have uh, a lot of savings in public cloud uh, bills. So I, I love this also because in other companies that I've been, I always heard that uh, the, the bill for AWS was having big numbers very big numbers and I always thought okay if there's a way to reduce dramatically that companies will will be able to invest that money in in, in other parts so well I was I was curious about uh, specifically this this part so about the project that I'm going to migrate well it's the spring pet clinic rest application that uses these different modules. So we have Spring Data, we have a Spring Web with REST, Spring Security, documentation for the API, actuators, Spring Micrometer, CDI, AOP, and Catch. For the Spring Data, this application comes with three different flavors. So one is uh, JPA, the other one is JDBC, uh, directly and the other one is uh, spring data jpa so what i'm what i've done just for uh, time purposes is just simply reduced to migrate the, what i think is the most uh, common use case that it is the uh, jpa version so on the quarkus side well we will have for the spring data we will have a hibernate panache for Spring Web, we will have JAX RS, Spring Security, Quarkus Security, Spring Documentation, Open API, Actuators, Small Right Health, Micrometer, Micro Profile Metrics, CDI, CDI Spec, the standard one, Spring AOP, we don't have AOP, Spring Catch, Quarkus Catch with Caffeine. This is the library. So which are the elements that I haven't migrated? As I said, well, I didn't migrate the other two flavors for the persistence. Uh, and also, uh, well, in this case, the Spring JDBC querying. So I didn't, I didn't do this. You can if uh, you use the library Agrol, but simply for time purposes, I didn't do it. And also the JMX parts, I didn't do it because uh, in theory, JMX is not supported by GraalVM. So here I will explain which are the steps for the migration. Let's talk about CDI. In this case, it's only a matter of if you are still using the spring auto wire annotation it's all uh, it's a matter of uh, replacing it with inject the standard one 
And the declaration of the beans is using another, uh, another annotation called application scope instead of um, bean or any other. Basically, it has auto-injection on constructors, yeah, similar to Spring, and it's lazy by default. So this is a very good thing to have in mind. So the pros with the CDI migration, well, it's it's been easy. I didn't miss any feature, so it was fine. But in the Spring version, as I said, there are th three flavors of the persistence, let's say. And the application will use one or another, depending on uh, the profile we pass on the command line. We didn't have this on Quarkus at that time, but you can always do it manually. So you can have a config property that you will pass the value on the command line, and then you are going to uh, say which is the implementation class depending on the value on that on that uh, profile that you pass. You can see the code on the right. But there's no, there was nothing implemented by default on the on Quarkus. Um, also, there are no. It can be. It cannot be a private member on the injection. So at least they have to be packaged with JPA repositories. Okay, so it's about implementing Panache repository, and you will find the usual methods for. Uh, connecting to, to the database. In this case, I went to Panache repository base just because uh, Panache repository considers that the identity class is uh, long, but uh, the spring version uh, had an integer. So I needed to go and de define which is the, the identity class, but it was easy. So it's a matter of creating uh, this class, implementing this uh, interface, and that's it. You will find uh, the usual methods: list, find, persist, delete, and, and others. So it's been it's been easy. But we don't have query DSL methods, so we cannot have um, a, an interface or a class defining those. Uh, famous methods from Spring that are find by name and age greater than 30, for instance, that the SQL query is um, defined by the name of the mess of the method. But you can you can do similar thing, uh, adding an annotation to a method with the query that you are going to to execute. I prefer this this way because the other way, the spring way, um, you always hit a point where it's super complicated to add the real query that you want in that method, just because you cannot put a parentheses. There are several things that will create a super long name method. Um, and I, I prefer the query that it's, it's more clear, at least for me. With REST, we have been moved from Spring REST to JAX RS. And in this case, it's more or less the same. It's about replacing one, one annotation with another. And in a particular case, that request mapping that can contain uh, several elements, you need to break it down into different annotations. But it's, it's a matter of... Uh, replacing strings and, and that's it. It's been very, very easy. Nothing to mention here. It was fine and, and also Spring can also support JAXRS. So if you already were using JAXRS, fine, nothing to change. Regarding security, well, we are moving from REST security to Quarkus security more or less is the same from the user perspective 
And you can see here the difference in the code in one. So in the spring one, it's pre-authorized. In the um, Quarkus one is roles allowed. The only difference that uh, I found, and I didn't know how to do it the same way with Quarkus, is that in spring, you can use, um, let's say, more complex expressions. So in the Quarkus part, it's simply a list of roles uh, that, can, that are allowed to, to enter the method, to execute the method. But in the spring one, you can, as you, as you can see, uh, you are saying, OK, it has a role, and in this case, owner admin. So it's completely the, the same thing. But you could, you could be using more complex expressions. We, I, didn't know, I, I didn't know the way to do the same uh, on Quarkus, simply just passing a, a list. That was the, the difference for me that I found. In this case also, this application was using um, the security was persisted in a database. So uh, for Quarkus, we need to use Elitron. And it's a matter of adding this dependency and configuring the properties in the properties file that it is basically just simply defining which is the query to execute to get the password and a role for a given user. And you can configure several other things. And that's it. For security will be persisted in a database in the database. And, and that's it. It's it's basically the same, no code involved in this case. As I said, the only uh, drawback is simply that Quarkus didn't have an expression language for the security in order to, to check the, the role that can enter the, the method. With the cross origin, uh, it's been very easy. Just simply adding two uh, properties in the properties file, and that's it. It will uh, activate, enable, uh, well, if you, obviously, if you use true, uh, it will enable the cross origin for your application, and that's it. The only drawback that I found is that at least in the spring version, you can specify the cores at the controller level. So uh, I'm not exactly sure which could be the use case to define different cores for different controllers but it can be done. And in the Quarkus uh, version, at least I didn't know how to do it. Uh, so in the properties, it was uh, at, uh, at a global level. That's, that's the difference too. Regarding the metrics, it's about adding the small right metrics extension. And then we can annotate all the methods that we want to have the metrics. And with, well, the regular uh, and the standard annotations, counted or timed, and then we will have the count and, and, the, and the total time for, for the, well, for the, the calls to that method. And yeah, you can see in these examples, uh, the way that it be, it's going to be shown when you request that uh, endpoint uh, to see the metrics associated to the application. With the metrics, the only drawback is that it had a different naming uh, than with micrometer. So with uh, Quarkus, that it is using the micro profile, uh, it is using uh, a prefix for some of the metrics. And in the micrometer one, it was not being used. Uh, at the time of the, of the migration, uh, they were working on a com compatibility toggle to say to Quarkus, use the micrometer uh, notation. Uh, but also, they have developed a, a micrometer extension. So some things have evolved. As I said, 
it's it's hard to cope with their with their work in order to update the the presentation but um also there is there was a difference be, uh, between the metrics that you could get it was not 100 percent the same and the biggest for me problem was that with um, spring you can use aop and then it's very easy to have metrics for lots of methods with only two lines, let's say. As we don't have AOP in Quarkus, well, we need to annotate every method or we can use uh, inspectors in, in, in CDI or we can use uh, the special hibernate uh, metrics property in order to get the hibernate metrics to be uh, put on 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 the log file regarding the validation so in this case it's about moving from spring validation to hibernate validation and moving from controller advice to an ex, uh, an exception mapper so it, it's well both are using the valid annotation and the annotations for each uh, po join of, to, to consider uh, which attribute is valid or not. The difference is with uh, the way that the exception is um, consumed or treated. And in this case, well, as you can see, you need to create a controller advice class with an exception handler, and then you specify which is the exception that you are treating with um, with uh, Jax RS exception mapper, you are simply implementing exception mapper and specifying which is the exception class. Well, it's there's not a lot of uh, a lot of uh, difference between both of them. So it's it was very 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 easy to to implement nothing to say here in in validation with the uh, api documentation well it's a matter of adding the open api extension and in order to specify the global information about your api uh, you need to simply add this uh, open API definition annotation to a class that extends application and then you will have it. That's it. It's easy. And you will have out of the box, you will have Swagger UI. If you are in the test profile, you can enable it for, for prod if you want. The only thing, thing that, I, that I found different is that in Spring, you can specify which are the packages to be scanned in order to add the information into the Swagger documentation. But I didn't find a way to, to do the same with Quarkus. So everything was uh, added to the API documentation. Uh, simply, I didn't find a way to do it uh, configuring the, the packages. For, for metrics, as I said before, the application was using AOP and it's been, it's very easy to create these, uh, these metrics. So you simply create an aspect, you specify the expression for an around and you define a method. In this case, you can see that every uh, method uh, of a class that is, uh, uh, a subclass of repository or implement repository will will be executed this invoke and then it will measure the time uh, proceeded because it is measuring mm, start and stop so with five lines you can have metrics for a lot of methods we don't have that with with quarkus so or you annotate every method, as you can see here on the right. Or in this case, this uh, AOP was used for um, 
database metrics. So we can do it using this property. So if you add this property to the properties file, then you will get all the metrics for the, the persistence. As you can see on the right, different metrics for uh, for the use of the, of the database in the application. So with one line, we solved the problem uh, that uh, the application was using AOP in this use case. So there are other use cases for, for AOP, but in the case of this project, this was solved with this line. As I said, there's no expression language to define methods affected and you need to annotate all methods or to use the property. For the rest, it was very easy. Regarding the local caching, well, it's, uh, it's very similar. So Spring uses a concurrent hash map and Caffeine uses concurrent linked hash map, but it's adding the extension and then uh, replacing the annotation, I think that for Spring is catch and for Quarkus is qu catch result. Just specify which is the catch. And then in the properties, you can set different properties for each of those catch. In this case, well, the initial capacity, the maximum size and, and others. So it was very, very easy to, to migrate the, the local catching. With uh, in the testing um, part, well, with the Spring, it is using mock MVC. In Quarkus, we needed to go to Rest Assure. I have to say that I prefer the taxonomy of uh, Rest Assure. For me, it's it's more clear. Uh, but well, it's 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 a matter of taste. It's everyone has different different views on this. So we needed to modify uh, the code to go to, to, to rest assured. The only, the only thing that changes is, well, the way to verify the content of the uh, JSON uh, in the response. Well, the default way in rest assured is GPath. And with the spring, we were using JSON path. Well, it's more, it's very similar, but that's all. And with the spring, we can have um, tests for roles in the methods. So it's like testing that if a, a role executes a method, then if it's uh, executed or not. I didn't find a way to do this in Quarkus. So for Quarkus, I needed to create a user that belongs to a role, and then uh, we can we can test that. But we cannot pass directly a role to a to a test in order to test the the security, or at least I didn't find a way to do it. About the resources, well, we and on testing we are not going to use the real database. We could use it because we could use test containers, but that's another story. And I encourage you to check my other blog posts about uh, test containers because it's a amazing uh, library that can allow you to test like if you were in production. But if you want to go to this, this other approach, then you need to start an H2 database. Well, using this Quarkus test resource H2 database test resource class, it will start an H2 database. And then, well, with the configuration on, on the properties in the test profile, uh, everything will work against this database. With mocks, is is easy. It's a matter of uh, adding the Quarkus JUnit 5 Mojito, and then you add the uh, inject mock, and that's it. You will have uh, the mock in your test class. So we have reached a point when I tell you, forget everything what I said. That's too hard. A lot of work to do, probably not worth it. There are better ways to do it. 
So let's explore the Spring API in Quarkus. So if you have your application using a Spring Web, just simply use a Spring Web extension and you are, it's, it's uh, likely you don't, you will not have to change anything because Quarkus is using those interfaces and it will do its magic in order to convert to the thing that it, it really uh, is interested on. So you simply leave your classes, your controllers as they are. And if you are not using a corner case, not covered by the extension, you don't need to change anything. Just leave your class as it is. Simply change the dependency. With dependency injection, exactly the same. So use the extension and don't change anything if you don't need to. So you always need to check which are the cases not covered by the, by the, the extension. But if you are not using them, simply use the extension and don't change anything. With Spring Data JPA, well, it's exactly the same. In, and in this case, we can use these find by name order by join methods. Uh, you don't have to touch anything in your in your mm, repositories uh, from from a Spring. If you don't use in this case uh, invocations of methods from query by example executor or query DSL, if you don't uh, call those methods then you're fine to go. Don't change anything and simply change the extension. With the Spring Security, exactly the same. And also in this case, we can use expressions in the uh, security, something that we couldn't use in the Quarkus version. Now with the Spring extension, we can use it. So it's uh, awesome. Don't touch anything and you will be fine. And we've reached the point where I show you this shallow performance comparative that you have to take, let's say, very carefully. OK, so I did the migration on the Spring Pet Clinic and REST application. So the original version with the Spring Boot 225 takes 4.3 seconds to be built and it generates a jar, a Uber jar, uh, of 48 megabytes. With Quarkus, it takes three times the time and more or less the same size. If you use GraalVM, uh, well, it takes even more time. And it generates a, a package double the size. That's because there are several things that the Spring Boot will do on runtime that Quarkus needs to do on compilation time. And with GraalVM, it also needs to compile even more in order to go natively. So that's why these, these, these times and sizes. But in fact, we are not very interested or concerned about uh, the size, but we are very interested on the boot time because if we want to go to a function as a service, or if we have several services that are going to be started and stopped, and well, it's crucial this time. So with the Spring Boot, the application took around seven seconds. With Quarkus Hotspot, it took a bit more than two seconds and a half. So it's almost three times faster. But with Quarkus GraalVM, it took less than half a second. So that's a big difference. We are coming from around seven seconds to less than half a second. And we are consuming from 600, more than 600 megabytes in memory in the Spring Boot version on JVM, we go to 250 
in JVM but with Quarkus. So it's more than, well, uh, less than uh, two times the memory. And, but if you, we go to, uh, to native with Graal, we are going to go to 21 megabytes. So we are, this, these numbers of less than half a second and 20 megabytes, uh, now you can think about having your services as uh, lambdas or uh, functions uh, in the serverless world because, uh, well, those numbers are, are allowing you to do that. And also if you are going to have several services uh, starting, stopping, this first uh, time that it takes to, to start obviously is going to impact in your build and, and also in the performance of the whole infrastructure. So this is, this is it about the migration and all that I had to explain. But now I want to share with you some references that can help you on going deeper in this uh, Quarkus stuff. Here you have the links to the Spring original Spring Pet Clinic application and the, the fork on the Quarkus branch uh, that it is the migration to Quarkus. On the right, you have uh, the link to the Quarkus uh, webpage, the Twitter handle, the developersredhat.com um, website where you will find several uh, tutorials and, and courses about Quarkus. And the mailing list where the team and the community around Quarkus will, will help on, on, on well, on any, any doubt that you have and also they will receive your feature request if you have some. These are the interactive tutorials about Quarkus. I, I totally encourage you to go there and try if you haven't tried Quarkus yet, because it's a very easy to use uh, environment. You don't mess with your local laptop and everything is ready to work and, to, uh, and optimized and it will work on, on the cloud. And it's very interactive and easy, and you will you will uh, learn a lot. There are several things you can you can try: Hibernate, Prometheus, streaming with Kafka, uh, the Spring extensions, and, and and so on. So I totally encourage that you you check that. Also, one of the resources that it's very interesting is the cheat sheet uh, by my colleague Alex Soto that uh, is publishing this document every time a new version comes out. And then, and there you will find all the, the, the new features and the changes summarized uh, and, and very easily to, to consume. The regular page to start an application, code.quarkus.io, you select the dependencies and it will create a zip file with all the code uh, to start uh, very quickly an application. And now I would also uh, like to introduce this tool. It's one of the tools that we are working in, in, in the team that I work for. It's called MTA or in the upstream version is called WindUp. And this application helps uh, customers, helps uh, people to uh, analyze uh, uh, applications considering different migration paths. There are uh, several, as I said, you can migrate from Camel 2 to Camel 3. You can uh, also migrate from WebSphere to EAP. Uh, you can from Monolith to Cloud. And there's also one migration path that it is a Spring Boot to Quarkus. And there are several rules covering different uh, elements of, of a Spring Boot. And it will give you information on your application that will help you to migrate. So these are the different uh, screens. There is one where you will see the different um, issues that the application will find in your application. Uh, you can find them uh, by category, mandatory, optional, potential. Well, and one thing that is important is that you can see 
that there are story points per incident. So this will give you also a measure uh, to know if the migration is big, regular or small. So this is also important in order to uh, prioritize different applications to be migrated. And it will give you all the incidents and the documentation related to them that will help you in order to migrate. So here you will find that replace the micrometer code with micro profile metrics code in the files that it founds and the uh, documentation that will help you to migrate on the right. If you hit uh, the, the file, then you will see exactly which is the line that it is causing this issue to, to be um, created. It gives you also information about the different libraries uh, used by your application. And it also has uh, plugins for Eclipse Che and VS Code that will directly in your code, will analyze the application and will give you the issues and then you can apply quick fixes directly to the code. Also, these are a uh, few real use cases of companies that have migrated. And I would especially focus on the Vodafone one that they replaced Spring Boot with Quarkus. And well, uh, they, they had uh, metrics about 50% uh, more lightweight in the JVM mode. So those are not even metrics going to native. So going to, uh, to hotspot, they even uh, found um, the migration very worth it. And that's it. Uh, we'll, uh, I will finish my presentation showing something that is not related with Quarkus, not related with technology. It's about sharing with you six different books that I've read that I love them all. And I will also want to share with you. This is because I had a teacher once that finished all the classes uh, recommending books, different books. And I, I love that, that action. So these are two on the left, novels. Uh, the last cut on for me is 10 times better than the, the Da Vinci Code. It is on, on the same on the same way. Uh, the Sea Cathedral is a history novel about uh, Santa Maria del Mar here in Barcelona, uh, about knowing how, how your mind works. Drive is a very interesting book about motivation. And Thinking Fast and Slow will give you a bit of idea uh, about the rational part and the irrational part of your brain. And about sci-fi, I would recommend uh, the Futurological Congress. It's a sci-fi and very funny history uh, about simulated reality. And Ubik, this is one of the most amazing books ever written about also simulated reality by the biggest, uh, the big uh, Philip Kadik that I, I love it. I love him a lot for all those books. And that's it. This is this is all that I had. Um, if you have questions, well, I am here now. But if you prefer to, to make them offline, you can do it at my Twitter handle, my email. Even you can post comments on the on my articles in 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 my blog post. Also, you can find the, find those articles in D Zone. And uh, last thing is my GitHub repository link that you can go there and check the code of the presentation. And that's it. If you have questions, I will be more than glad to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan, for great presentations. I found all the resources very useful. I will certainly go through them. So we are uh, running uh, sort of time out over here. So uh, we have created a breakout room and we can discuss about all the questions that we have in that break. I'm posting the link in the chat so that uh, all the attendees that have any questions, they can go to the breakout room and ask the questions to you. So okay. the uh, 
in the expo sections on the left side there is a breakout room with the uh, name pixies you can go over there and ask the questions to you and again thank you so much for your wonderful presentations thank very you very much to all of you or, or otherwise yeah thank you